So our very first speaker this morning, we thought we'd do something a little bit different. And I'm really, really delighted to introduce our first speaker this morning. It's Bart Vietjens from um, the Wellbeing Project in Belgium. And I have to be honest, I can't introduce Bart, who I have huge, huge love for, without telling you how much I love the project to which he's going to talk to you a little bit about. The Wellbeing Project, to which I was one of the very first cohort to take part in it, is honestly one of the most important life-changing things that I have ever done. And Frank Hoffman, who you met yesterday, who spoke from the stage, is also a participant of the Wellbeing Project. And this project has had the most profound change on so many of us who work in the area of social change. And it has enabled all of us to be even better at what we do by working really through how we work as individuals, who we are as people. Not just the subject matter of what we do, but how present we are in our own work. For those of us who work in the area of social change, like all of you do, we have to take care of ourselves. We really need to take care of ourselves. We work very, very hard to try and change the world for everyone else, and we need to make sure our world, the way we take care of ourselves, is just as important. So I am delighted to welcome Bar. Please give him a really warm round of applause because this man is a dude. So Bar, you're very, very welcome. Well, well, to be introduced like that, uh, how can I improve on this, Caroline? Uh, but thanks so much for the introduction. And uh, I'm delighted to be invited here uh, to share about the Wellbeing Project. It's um, a journey a journey of exploration, a journey of inner work. And um, let me maybe give you a short overview of what this project is about. Um, Aaron Pereira, uh, an Ashoka Fellow who lives in Paris, um, set up this project, which actually is a co-creation project between Ashoka, SLN, the Fetzer Institute, the Skoll Foundation, and Synergos Institute in New York. These institutions together look at how they can support social change leaders with inner work. This comes from a pre-study that Aaron did among 50 Ashoka Fellows, and he discovered that many of them, actually a large majority, are challenged with personal sustainability. These are all social change leaders building a world without barriers, but risk through empathic resonance to go down. And they, many of them have even never allowed themselves or given themselves permission uh, to take care of themselves. They totally go for the impact they want to create in society. Now, the social change institutions and social entrepreneurship networks and so on, they all tend to reinforce this kind of hero culture where the social change leader is a person who goes out there and changes the world, and that sacrificial type of aspect is reinforced all the time. Um, many social change leaders struggle with this and many have never really taken the chance or done any kind of inner work. And with inner work, I mean all kinds of um, inner development practices. It can be meditation, it can be yoga, it can be all kinds of therapies, gestalt, constellation, you name it, anything that actually built the person from within. And why is this so important? It's because and the data from this project starts confirming this, if we don't engage in social change from a place, from inner well-being, what we actually effect in society risks not to be really sustainable. So just like Caroline said, the how we do engage in social commitment 
is equally, if not more important, than what we actually do in the world. And I know for many of you, this is not strange. Yet, so far, it was an unexplored uh, domain of research, and the Wellbeing Project is actually, first of all, providing support in, for inner work with 60 highly recognized, seasoned social entrepreneurs um, to provide an individualized uh, support program to help them with their inner journey. Secondly, in this cohort of 60 social entrepreneurs, actually divided in three cohorts that go through a one and a half year program, we collect data, we research the relationship between this inner work and the quality and effectiveness of the social change of, that these leaders uh, do. In the third pillar, um, we have like a learning and convening. With the main organizations influencing the field in social change, we want them to know about these important data because it can change the culture in the field to one that is more caring and compassionate for these leaders engaging in this important work, creating a better world. And last but not least, we have a storytelling pillar that is starting to emerge now as the first people come out of these cohorts. Because if we really want to impact the culture in social change uh, sector, uh, we have to create this, we have to change that, that culture, we have to actually use stories to, uh, to, to change. Um, what is emerging? from this research data is, is really significant. We see that many of these people who are uh, engaged in a path of inner development are more capable of sharing their leadership. They run more horizontal organizations with happier staff, less staff turnover, less burnout, um, overall, in the knitting, um, a more... Um, in the knitting, actually, a, a, a more sustainable approach to social change. Um, and this is really important. We, things that are emerging are things around identity. Social entrepreneurs, without their work, allowing themselves to be who they are. For many, this is a great challenge. Also, things about relationship how they relate to themselves in this world, how they relate to those who are dear to them, and how do they relate to their colleagues. All of these aspects have for far too long been ignored um, because the social change world looks at what is the impact, how can we scale this, the hard numbers. And albeit this is an important measurement, to evaluate social change in the long term, um, we really need to look at these softer aspects and, and really take care and allow social change leaders to engage in an inner journey in order to be able to effect uh, sustainable change. What we do with, and maybe I can, take, can, I can get a chair to, to sit here. Um, I would like to, I have, yeah, that's, that's perfect, thanks. Um, I would like to actually to invite you to join me on one of those practices. Um, I'm trained as a Zen priest, and um, so I do a lot of meditation. And to set our journey for today of this conference for an engaging, mindful uh, interaction, I would love you to, to join me in, in sitting in a bit in silence, and I give a few directions for a very simple body-mind practice. So maybe if those who are taking, um, tapping on your phones and, and all that, please close your computers, close your phones. Um, instead of leaning back in your chairs, just take the front part of your seat. I'm going to sit a little bit back, so... Okay. Um, make sure your feet are well on the ground. I'm going to actually put up this chair a little higher, if that works. Make sure you're sitting comfortably without leaning back on your chair. Put your hands on your lap. 
make sure you have like a solid base with your feet on the ground. Don't sit cross-legged, but really openly with your feet, your feet well apart. Uh, don't lean back. S simply you try it in, with the body you have. If not possible, you lean back. But if it's possible for you to sit straight, try to um, be concentrated on the verticality of your posture. Stretch the back, the neck. Push the top of the head to the sky, as if you wanted your body to become long. Relax your face. Relax the shoulders. Relax your chest and the belly. Breathe in and out a few times deeply. And let the breathing descend into the lower belly. Feel how in your lower belly the center of energy. Don't think of any but anything else apart from yourself now here sitting inside your body and keeping your mind focused on following the breathing. what we do when we create a world without barriers is in the first place create no barriers within ourselves open up ourselves to reality as it is if we can do that we can engage in the world in a spontaneous way, without prejudice, in an inclusive way. In order to do that, we need to face reality, our own reality. I'm not talking about the big challenges in the world, I'm talking about our own vulnerability. By using a technique, and there's many of them, a technique that brings us in the present moment, in this very place, we immediately connect with reality as it is and from there we can see how we function what we do we learn about ourselves and by studying ourselves this way and learning about ourselves we get to a place from where we can engage with the world in a lasting way, in a solid way, balanced, without prejudice, and effective. In that way, we can actually become the change we want to see in society.
don't fall asleep now. I know it was late last night, but what can be helpful is to breathe in a few times deeply, rather than uh, the, the breathing out is helpful in, in reducing thoughts. Uh, focusing on breathing in helps us wake up. So breathe in a few times deeply if you are falling asleep. That space where we are now, filled with our attention, is one to cherish. If we can stay true to that place, we can create a culture of inner well-being, which radiates, informs, inspires how we do well in society. So my wish for you in this conference and beyond is to stay connected with that inner space and by doing that, connect with others in a true and deep way. To conclude and before we go to the next session, let's stand up if possible. And let's make ourselves as long as possible. Put your hands up completely and make yourself very long. Breathe in completely and breathe out completely. If you make sure you have some space in front of you. Sorry for those who knocked the table. <laughs> and once more. And again, let's breathe out. And we'll do it the third time. Thank you very much for your participation. I wish you a lovely day. Thank you, Bart. Isn't that a fantastic way to start the day? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>